Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about video games. 2023, by all accounts, was a pretty good year for video games, at least in terms of the games themselves. Industry-wise, it was a bit of a shit show, with over 6,000 developers losing their job over the year. However, even when it comes to games, there were some things that I found quite disappointing. These aren't necessarily bad games, just games I had certain expectations of, which weren't met. And some which were just bad games. To start out with, I have a regular four-player co-op group and we play games together every week. We're always on the lookout for new things to play, and one thing that we were greatly looking forward to was Redfall. Redfall, I'll admit, my expectations weren't super high. I was just looking for a fun monster shooter where I could run around and do missions with my friends. That's really all I wanted. The fact that it was vampires was kind of cool as opposed to the usual zombies, but I wasn't looking for all that much. I don't even have a good history with arcane games, uh, usually liking their worlds and their aesthetics, but not actually liking how they played. So I really needed so little from this game, and yet it still somehow didn't deliver. The game is just really janky. The world is unnecessarily open, and also for such an open world, pretty empty. You run into the same kinds of enemies all the time. The missions are pretty samey. Nothing about this game really stands out in any way. Even the cutscenes, which you think could be impressive, are mostly just a series of still images as you go. Uh, this story is really nothing to write home about. There's maybe one level I found that was different enough from the rest of the game to actually stand out. Otherwise, everything just kind of muddled together in a group of way too much travel time and uh, way too little things to do. Uh, it is a game that we did end up finishing, but no one really had that much fun with it. Uh, we just were happy to have something that we could all play through a story together. But yeah, Redfall was definitely a disappointment on many levels from the boss fights to the abilities, the talent trees, the characters. It just, it just wasn't a very good game. And I felt like they had to do so little to impress me and they still managed to fail. So yeah, I would have to say that Redfall is probably my most disappointing game of the year, which is kind of sad. <laughs> Continuing on with co-op games, this one technically came out in 2022, but it just got a console release this past year, and that is Warhammer 40k Darktide. And we had not too long ago played another game in the sort of, I guess, parallel universe, uh, Vermintide, which is, you know, a four-player kind of monster fighting game and we really liked that one it was had a sort of campaign discrete missions that you went on and then moved on to the next one we liked playing it overall we were basically hoping for that same kind of experience just in the sci-fi um sci-fi world rather than more of a fantasy world and unfortunately the game didn't end up being that like that at all uh, this one is more of a always online, never ending, procedurally generated mission kind of game. Uh, you run around and you see other people in the hub world and you basically just pick a random mission. It's usually one of three different types you can do. We found it pretty difficult, honestly, which was surprising because we've been playing games together for a long time now. and. We're all right at it, but every mission we went to started off fine, and then once we got to the end, we would just get overrun and uh, completely fail at the mission. I don't think we ever actually completed one, although we didn't end up playing the game for that long either. But yeah, I was just really disappointed. Maybe it was my own expectations, but I was hoping for a four-player co-op game with a beginning and an end, and this was just absolutely not that. There were also a lot of Metroidvanias that I was looking forward to playing this year. Um, obviously, somewhat of a disappointment. Silk Song never, never came out, so still hoping for next year. Uh, 
But I found a lot of games that I was looking forward to looked really nice or they had a really cool concept, but they just didn't nail how it actually feels to play the game. I did make a video specifically on all the Metroidvanias I played this year, if you want more details on these games. But the ones that were most disappointing to me were Romancelvania, which is a combination of sort of dating sim and Metroidvania. I played the demo when it came out uh, sometime before release, and I quite liked the first little bit of it. Uh, the sort of castle and the exploration was sort of more guided and linear, and you were kind of overpowered, so you didn't really need to worry about combat at the beginning. And then the dating sim aspect of it, like there was a lot of good writing around it. As the game progressed, all of the gaming weaknesses just came out in terms of just sort of floatiness, strange level design, complete lack of map, combat feeling weightless, and then even the dating sim aspect started to get where you weren't really getting to talk to the other romanceable characters too much, and you spent way more time just kind of running around trying to find new ones. So that one was a pretty big disappointment for me. The other one was Curse of the Sea Rats, and what I was most excited about this was that you can play it with up to four players on couch co-op. Um, it also had a very cool art style, although to be honest, that wasn't what drew me to this particular game. And this is one that just felt bad to play. Like, it felt very unresponsive, the controls weren't good, uh, none of the characters felt that different to play. When you were playing co-op, you were punished if you sort of got off screen or too far away from your partner, so yeah. I was playing this with my friend and we didn't even end up ever going back to it after our first time playing it. It just felt too bad. Like the whole control scheme, which also I think ties into the animation, needed a refresh to make that game uh, something that I would want to play. Some games came out that I wouldn't say I was necessarily that hyped for, but I heard what other people were saying about them, and they seemed really excellent. And more than being disappointed with the games themselves, I think they kind of taught me that I'm just sort of over certain genres or certain game styles. So the first one of these was Planet of Lana, which is sort of a cinematic puzzle platformer. Very pretty, story is very vague, you know, there's not really any talking, you're just watching what's happening, and you go around this world with the little friendly blob creature, and you have to sort of stealth around and avoid enemies and solve little puzzles to get through. And I was just bored most of the time. Um, it just, I did end up finishing it because it was quite short, but yeah, there was nothing that was really drawing me in in any way really, aesthetically, story-wise, gameplay-wise, I found the sort of escort mission um, aspect of it, even though it's not really an escort mission, but you have to keep your little pet alive, had absolutely no appeal to me at all. So I, this isn't the first one of these that I played this year that I found myself having a hard time connecting with. So I feel like the cinematic puzzle platformer is just like, something I, I don't need to play anymore, which is fine. That's a good realization. The other one is Cocoon, which is slightly different. This one's more just a straight puzzle game. Again, very beautiful art, good sound, um, but I, I don't like pushing boxes and pulling levers. And uh, yeah, this one I didn't finish. I played it for maybe an hour or two. And the whole time I just felt kind of bored by it. So I feel like these kind of puzzle games are another genre that aren't just, just aren't holding my attention anymore. And this next one, I don't think this is a particularly new realization, but I just don't really get on with Bethesda games all that well. I wasn't that hyped for Starfield. I wasn't particularly interested in it at all until this sort of last big reveal before release that made me think, oh, actually, 
maybe this is something I do want to try. And I kept putting it off, kept saying like, oh, I'll, I'll start it when I finish Baldur's Gate or I'll start it here. So finally I sat down to play it and it just confirmed everything. I just don't get on with these kinds of games, the sort of blank eyed NPCs who stare at you during dialogue, the middling combat, the fact that there's just so much shit everywhere, just like picking up clipboards and wrenches and toolboxes that you never need or maybe you will need for crafting eventually. But yeah, I've never gotten on with an Elder Scrolls game. I liked Fallout 3 and New Vegas, but have never been able to go back to them. And yeah, playing Starfield just cemented, like this is not my kind of game. So I didn't play that too much. I also can't say I'm that disappointed by it because I wasn't, I didn't expect a whole lot. <laughs> and the last game is something that I actually did have high hopes for. It seemed like a strange game that was right up my alley, and that is Stray Gods. This bills itself as a role-playing musical. Uh, you play a young woman who has been given the power of a muse and realizes that all of these Greek gods are real and sort of gets swept into that world, but also they all think that she killed the muse and took her power, so she's trying to sort of prove her innocence and see uh, what actually happened. So to start off with, the performances in this game are fantastic. The voice acting, the singing is all really good. Um, everything is voice acted. It's mostly just sort of like a choose your own adventure. You're choosing your kind of response to uh, certain conversation as well as song prompts, whether you're gonna sort of interact with one character or another, or whether you're gonna be pretty aggro or pretty passive. So you're making those kinds of decisions. The art style is very nice. I really like all the designs of the characters. Sort of animation wise, there's not a lot going on. It's kind of like a series of comic book stills that like move a little bit over time, but it's a fairly static kind of art style. The problem is the role playing isn't particularly strong. Like I never felt like my decisions were really that meaningful or really developing my character in a way. But the biggest problem is that as a musical, I didn't like the music, <laughs> which is a huge problem. I felt like the writing and the performances were so good while it was just dialogue and then a song would start and it'd be like, oh, this is kind of bad. Uh, there were maybe two or three songs where I was like, oh yeah, this is okay. But for the most part, it felt like people just singing dialogue at each other, which is basically what it was. Um, it's sort of amazing how much music they had to record for all of the different options and tones and ways that things got sung or ways songs could go. But I just didn't feel it really came together cohesively. None of the songs were particularly catchy. I couldn't like hum some of any of them for you. If it were to come up on like a playlist, I would probably skip them. I just didn't think the music was very good, which you need to have when it's a role-playing musical. So I actually just finished playing this today and I was hoping I would like it so much more than I did. And I love the ambition of making something like this. I think it's really cool. I think if it had better music, it would be quite good and it could even be like on my best games of the year list. But yeah, as it is, I don't know, you can't have a musical if the music isn't good. So Stray Gods was pretty disappointing. So those were the games that disappointed me in some way in 2023. Leave me a comment, let me know what games disappointed you. I will be back in, I don't know, maybe a week or so to talk about my favorite games of 2023. I think there was a ton of excellent ones and I have a very strong top 10 plus some honorable mentions. I just need to write the script before I can actually make the video. But yes, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. If you want to see more, check out some of my disappointments from last year or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to help support the channel. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.